Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Seth and Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So this week, we got a deck I am super, super excited about. We are playing something very unique, very different, and extremely fun. Uh, a deck that is essentially a mono-red token deck for standard that I'm calling Devil's Goggles. So as you can see, 96 bucks in the paper world, 32 ticks on Magic Online. Uh, so let's break it down. Devil's Goggles, of course, first the namesake card, Pyromancer's Goggles. You probably know what this one does. It sees some play in standard. It is a 5 mana legendary artifact that adds a red mana. When you use that mana to cast a red instant or sorcery spell, you get to double that spell, essentially. You copy it, you can choose new targets, etc, etc, etc. So one of the cool things about our deck is we are very focused on Pyromancer's Goggles. We have, in our main deck, 33 non-land, non-pyromancer goggles cards, and 28 of them are red instants or sorceries. So pretty much once we get a pyromancer's goggles down, we are going to be doubling something up pretty much every turn for the rest of the game and creating a huge advantage. So you've probably seen Pyromancer's Goggles in action, doubling up card draw spells like Tormenting Voice or Magmatic Insight. And we do have those cards, and we'll talk about them, but the main idea of the deck is to double up some token producers. So this is what makes the deck unique. Instead of doubling up burn spells or card draw, we are looking to double up Dragon Fodder, Dance with Devils, and Devil's Playground. So these are all cards that make tokens uh, in one way or another, and they are all okay on their own right some are better than others but when you double these up the advantage they generate is absolutely insane so let's start with dragon fodder two mana you get two one one red goblin creature tokens it's fine a lot of the times we play it on turn two get a couple goblins maybe they trade with something maybe they can chump block or even attack in the right matchups but when we can cast it in the late game with Pyromancer's Goggles, we get four of those tokens, and four 1-1s for two mana is pretty insane. I mean, as you know, Hordling Outburst was a standard staple, and that made three 1-1 Goblin tokens for three mana. So Dragon Fodder with Pyromancer Goggles is just a strict upgrade on Hordling Outburst. Then the key cards in the deck are these Devil Token producing cards. So Devil Tokens are pretty interesting. They're new for Shadows over Innistrad. Devil tokens are 1-1s. One They're red, but when they die, they deal a damage to a creature or player. So Dance with the Devils is an instant, which is pretty important, makes two 1-1 one, one red devil tokens. So we can cast this during our opponent's turn, even without goggles. And the great thing about devil's tokens is they trade up. So you can block a two toughness creature with a devil token. It takes one damage from the token. You can ping it with the dies trigger for the second damage and kill it. You can also split up that damage so you can chump block a big creature and ping a little creature to kill it, or ping the, our opponent's face to start taking down their life total. Uh, when it's just making two 1-1 one, one devil tokens, it's not great unless we're really ambushing something at instant speed. But with Pyromancer's Goggles, and you're getting four of those tokens for only four mana instant speed, it is very strong. And then the big one, Devil's Playground, four 1-1 one, one red devil tokens for six mana, you're probably thinking, oh, these cards are just a little over-costed, four tokens for six mana, isn't that efficient? But you have to remember that essentially Devil's Playground is not only four tokens, but also four damage for six mana. So it's kind of this hybrid token producer slash burn spell because you get the damage when they die, which makes the card a little better than it looks. Plus, it's absolutely absurd with Pyromancer's Goggles. When you get eight of those tokens, which will eventually be eight damage divided up as we choose among creatures or players, plus it's eight chump blockers or eight attackers, it is super, super good. So we want to make a bunch of tokens. Even apart from Pyromancer's Goggles, we get a bunch of token producers. We have four Thopter Engineer, one P and Karen Nalar. So these are cards that are good on their own, plus they make a token when they come into play. You'll see as we go through this list, wh what we really want to do is flood the board with tokens. We want to go really, really wide, and Thopter Engineer and P and Karenilar help with this. Foundry of the Console actually does the same thing. It's a land we can sack to make Thopters. Spawning Bed, a land we can sack to make Scion tokens. They do some cool things. P and Karen Nalar is nice because it helps fizzle Declaration in Stone, targeting a Thopter token. We can sack the Thopter token to P and Karen Nalar, do two damage. Keeps all of our Thopter tokens from getting exiled. The Thopter Engineer 
gives our Thopter tokens haste, so it's a good way to get in some surprise damage. Uh, Foundry of the Consoles gives us flying chump blockers, which is pretty relevant. Our deck is very, very, very good at gumming up the ground and uh, not dying to ground creatures. We can go a long time against decks that want to grind out the advantage on the ground, but it can struggle a bit against big flyers, Avacyn, Ojitai, things like that. But Thopter Engineer, P and Canrel R, and Foundry of Consoles gives us chump blockers to keep those creatures at bay long enough that we can pull off our big finishes. And then the spawning bed, worse than Foundry of the Console most of the time, but the Cyan Tokens, since you can sack them, it's a good way to fizzle the lifelink on Kalidus or something like that. So, we're making a ton of tokens, either with Pyromancer's Goggles, making those Devil Tokens, Thopter Engineer, P and Karen, our lands. What are we doing with these tokens? Well, here's the big finish, the big payoff for going wide with these tokens, because one of the problems is it's hard to win with 1-1s. Like, 1-1s on their own are pretty easy to get stonewalled. Even the devil tokens can be stonewalled fairly easily by big creatures. Well, we have two different cards that takes care of that problem. First, a card I've been trying to get work uh, a card I've been trying to get to work since it was printed, essentially. Descent of the Dragons just hadn't been able to make it work until now. Six mana, sorcery, destroy any number of target creatures. For each creature destroyed this way, its controller puts a 4-4 red dragon creature with flying onto the battlefield. So, we have, eh, a bunch of devils from our Pyromancer's Goggles, maybe some Thopters, even some Scions. Eventually, we're going to draw our Descent of the Dragons, and we're going to upgrade all of our tokens into 4-4 Flyers, which means they are really, really hard to beat. It is hard to lose after resolving a Descent of the Dragons, uh, unless an opponent can literally untap and, like, wrath the board in some way, Declaration and Stone the Dragons, you're pretty much guaranteed to win. The best part of it is not only does Descent of Dragons turn all of our creatures into big flyers, but it can also deal a bunch of damage to our opponent's face or wrath the board with the devil tokens. So we, a lot of times this deck will have six, eight, 10, 16 <laughs> uh, devil tokens on the battlefield. So just sacking all of those creates a huge advantage even disregarding the fact that we're getting nine four four flyers or something, we're also dealing a bunch of damage, either taking down our opponent's life total or killing their board. So it's just so strong. Westville Abbey kind of does the same thing. Instead of going wide with dragon tokens, we get one really big, almost unbeatable creature in Ormondal. Of course, I mean, there are some issues with Ormondal. It gets bounced by Reflector Mage, still gets hit by Declaration in Stone, but it's a 9-7, it's indestructible, it's got flying, it's got lifelink. It is very hard to deal with outside of really specific cards. And our deck is set up to flip Westville Abbey quicker than just about any deck in Standard. Because we can double up those token producers, and we have the token producing lands, plus the PN Karen and the Thopter Engineer, it is very easy for us to go from an empty board to having 8 or 10 tokens on the battlefield and flipping Westville Abbey in the course of one or two turns. So even if they can deal with our Westville Abbey, it's pretty easy just to make another one. My one regret with this deck is that we can't play four Westville Abbeys because of the price. Just couldn't get it to fit under the budget. So if you have four Westville Abbeys, take out the spawning beds, up the count of Westville Abbey. It is the nuts in this deck. Westville Abbey is so, so, so good. Uh, so amazingly good. Uh, the rest of the deck, we have some more Pyromancer Goggles action. This package is pretty typical. Got the goggles with Magmatic Insight and Tormenting Voice. Pretty much... <laughs> uh, the Goggles turns these cards into draw threes for either one or two mana. Then we have a bit of removal. We have four Fiery Impulse, mostly a way to stabilize in the early game. Usually we have Spell Mastery because our deck is so spell heavy. Plus, in the late game, we can take down an Ojitai or an Avacyn or something by doubling it up with Pyromancer's Goggles. Fall of the Titans is sometimes a way to kill our opponent. We have enough cheap spells that we can usually surge it. We have enough goggles that we can often double it in the late game. So a lot of times we can deal 18, 16, 20 damage to our opponent's face. At the same time, if that's not good enough or we can't quite kill our opponent, we can also just wrath away their board and turn it into a plague win by surging it, doubling it with goggles, hitting four creatures for, I don't know, four or five damage each, and just wipe away all our opponent's creatures, buys us a lot of time, lets us win with our tokens and our Descent of the Dragons and so forth. And then, otherwise, 16 Mountains. We already talked about some of the lands in other sides, West Flabby, Spawning Pools, Foundry of the Consoles. So we're not playing 16 lands, we actually have 24 lands, but they've been divided up, fitting into uh, the right category uh, throughout the deck deck. 
Sideboard wise, the key card, the most important card is Impact Tremors. My big concern with this deck was how will we ever ve beat Virulent Plague? Virulent Plague, all creature tokens get negative two, negative two. I figured that we would just never, ever, ever beat that card. We're mono red, so we don't really get enchantment removal. We can't bounce it. We can't counter it. We can't. I mean, if our opponent plays it, it's just like our entire deck gets locked out. Then I realized, well, maybe we don't have to remove it from the battlefield. Maybe we can just win through a Virulent Plague, as crazy as that sounds, with Impact Tremors. So with an Impact Tremors, it deals the damage whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control. So we play an Impact Tremors, even if our opponent has a Virulent Plague out, we like transform into this really janky burn deck. So we cast a Devil's Playground, we get four tokens, they deal four damage from Impact Tremors, when they enter the battlefield, they immediately die to Virulent Plague, deal four more damage from the Devil Tokens dies triggers, so that's like eight damage for six mana, and that's not even counting Pyromancer's Goggles, which could potentially make that 16 damage for only six mana, so it just gets really insane. Otherwise, we got a bunch more removal, two Rending Volleys for Avacyn and Ojitai, Fiery Tempers, just additional creature removal, plus if we think there's a Virulent Plague, these are also important in our janky burn deck plan, and then two Smash to Smithereens to deal with artifacts, and three Vessel of Volatility, uh, probably shouldn't be in the sideboard. I started with this in the main deck because I was afraid our deck would be too slow. Then I replaced it with, I think it was Thopter Engineer. I figured it would gum down the board enough by making tokens and kind of slow down the game in its own way. So instead of trying to be faster with Vessel, which is a horrible top deck in the late game, I figured we'd be more resilient and kind of slow the game down. So I moved the Vessels to the sideboard thinking maybe against some like control matchups, this, the explosiveness would be beneficial. And then I never actually cited it in so i think you'd probably replace this with something more impactful anyway that is devil's goggles i i think this deck is awesome it is fairly competitive and some of its plays are just insane it has the green black aristocrats kind of combo kill where we sack a bunch of the devil tokens and then get an Ormondal and hit for like 14 damage out of nowhere. It also has a sort of combo kill with the Descent of the Dragons doing the same thing. Plus we just get to draw a ton of cards, we have some decent removal. It, there's a lot of ways of winning the game, so I was super impressed with how this deck played out. It looks janky, the idea of it seems janky, but when you actually play it, you'll find out that it's actually pretty powerful and it is extremely fun. So I, I am super excited about it and I had a blast playing it this week. Anyway, make sure to check out the website, mtgoldfish.com. Got tons of awesome content, decks, prices, metagame strategy, pretty much everything and anything you could want related to Magic the Gathering. And if you enjoyed our Devil's Goggles deck tech in the videos, make sure to click the like button and the subscribe button that are about to pop up on the bottom of your screen. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoy our Devil's Goggles in standard videos, and I will talk to you soon.